When it's all over with, when you boil it all down, is where are you going when you die? Because, you know, we all have problems in life. We all have, you know, things that we consider to be pertinent issues and uh, priorities. Uh, but when you die, it's where did you go? That's important. And it'll override everything else that you ever decide upon. It'll be the greatest decision you ever made in your whole life is to make sure that you have eternal life and know that you're going to heaven. Well, there's a lot of people that are going to church, reading Bibles, doing a lot of praying, and posting a lot of things on the Internet. And I think sometimes there must be a fake Bible out there someplace because they got fake news. It's not the real thing. It's not what God said. So I um, know by certain questions that people ask whether they really get it or not. And I've had people say, well, you know, yeah, you're saved by grace. But if you don't live right, you're not really saved. Now, that sounds spiritual. Like they really know what they're talking about. Yes, yes, that does sound spiritual. It sounds biblical as well. Friend, let's take a look and see what the scripture, what the Bible has to say about a person that confesses the Lord Jesus Christ should live their life. Ephesians 4. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Skip down a few verses. Live a life filled with love. Following the examples of Christ, He loved us and offered Himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed amongst you. Such sins have no place amongst God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater worshipping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey Him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. So live as people of light. And this is not merely a suggestion. Because if you look at verse 5, it says, If you don't, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the power in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclination of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. See, he says, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. Friend, how you live determines if you're obeying God or obeying the devil. And I'm not just picking out a few scripture. The Bible is constantly encouraging us to live a life worthy of his calling. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. They haven't got a clue. That has nothing to do. How you live your life has nothing to do with where you're going to spend eternity. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your own teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Friend, this makes it pretty clear that if Jesus has saved you, you will live a different lifestyle out of a heart of gratitude. 2 Peter chapter 3 and so, dear friends, 
while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. And remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture, and this will result in their destruction. How you live your life has nothing to do with where you're going to spend eternity. It doesn't. And when people escape from the wickedness of this world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, okay, that's talking to Christians, and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. Friend, you were heading for hell before you knew Jesus. And this says that you will be worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it, and then to reject the command they were given to live, to live a holy life. Friend, if you're a Christian, you have been given a command by the Lord Jesus Christ to live a holy life. And friend, if you reject that command, it says that you are worse off than before. It doesn't. So anyway, I want to um, have you turn your Bible to the book of John, the Gospel of John in chapter 3. Simple things, but they can cause you a lot of problems if you cannot answer certain statements. And I want to show this to you. There's a lot of people who are getting messed up because of the word should. Should. And so uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Well, you shouldn't, but you still could. But have everlasting life. Well, see, well, you know, you shouldn't perish, but you still could perish. So should depends on you've got to keep believing. He that believeth hath everlasting life. As long as you believe, you have everlasting life. But if you don't continuously keep believing, then you don't have eternal life. And so therefore, they mean by you keep believing, you've got to keep believing and keep walking that straight and narrow way, or you lose your salvation. Then you've got to get saved all over again. Well, is, is that true? Of course it's not true. And so, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Well, you shouldn't, but you still could. That's right. The Bible's right. You still could perish. Friend, just because you believe in Jesus does not mean you have salvation, eternal life. John 12 Many people did believe in Jesus, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. You see, many did believe in Jesus, but they were more concerned about what people thought of them than what God thought of them. Friend, is your life lived to please God, or are you pursuing your own interests? Have you ever had to give up what's most dear to you because you love Jesus more? Do people that you rub elbows with day to day know that you get offended if they use the Lord's name in vain around you? Do they know that you will not listen to their inappropriate jokes? Do they know you as a person that does not complain? Do they know that you would never look at inappropriate images? Or are you careful not to have Christ Jesus interfere in your daily life? A person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Friend, Jesus doesn't light a lamp and then hides it under a basket. No, he places the lamp on a stand where its light can be seen by all. But have everlasting light. Well, see, well you, you shouldn't perish, but you still could perish. That's right. Jesus says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Many people say they believe, but do they actually obey the Lord Jesus? James 2 You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! 
Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Abraham was shown to be right with God by his action when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see his faith and his action were together. His action made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scripture says, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her action. By the way, Rahab is a Gentile. So you see, friend, he's talking to all of us. And Rahab is listed in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 as an example of faith for the ones that will inherit eternal life. Friend, it's deception to think that you believe in Jesus and yet not believe Jesus when he tells you that you will end up in hell if your eye causes you to sin. Jesus says, anyone, yes, that's anyone, even those who believe, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Friend, don't deceive yourself. Jesus is talking to you and I. In Second Peter, it's talking about people that are in the church. And it says that they are under God's curse. They are a disgrace and a stain amongst you. They delight in deception even as they eat with you in your fellowship meals. They commit adultery with their eyes. And their desire for sin is never satisfied. They live under God's curse. So should depends on you've got to keep believing. He that believeth hath everlasting life. As long as you believe, you have everlasting life. But if you don't continuously keep believing, then you don't have eternal life. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Oh, boy. And so, therefore, they mean by you keep believing, you got to keep believing and keep walking that straight and narrow way, or you lose your salvation. Then you got to get saved all over again. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firm in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. Well, is, is that true? Of course it's not true. And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. The reward for trust in Him will be the salvation of your soul.